the tea? What's 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 the tea? Hello, hello everyone. I am the Water Bear and welcome back to the Water Bear's Tea. And this is the weekly energy reading from January the 13th through the 19th. Okay, I'm entitling this week, What Does Your Future Look Like? It's the last week of Cap, right? Last week of Capricorn season, guys. Last week of the focus of Capricorn. And I'll get into all that focus in a second, okay? Um, I just think it's funny, like every time I start these videos, I'm in a different location. I really am. I feel like um, that song, you know that song, All Around the World. Hey girl, hey girl. <laughs> uh, my North Node is in Sagittarius about travel, so I guess you're always going to see me all through the world. Just new videos all, all, everywhere, you know, as time goes on. Um, it's currently raining, so I can't really do what I usually do on the outside of you, but um, I still want to be outside. I actually love being outside when it's raining. Um, so, if you can hear the rain, you know, it's an added therapeutic effect. Oh, there's a little dog, stray dog walking, hello. See, okay, he turned around, I thought he was going to come over here. Regardless, let's get into this week, guys. Um, how are we feeling? Last week's energy was, like, major, 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 and honestly, it's going to continue, and, and you'll start to see a dip in the intensity as we get to the middle of the week. Um, but if you looked at last week's weekly energy reading, and just any post from any astrologer this past week, um, you've seen our hype about all the things that are happening, you know, all of the um, transits happening, the lunar eclipse that we're having in the, in the middle of right now, um, that was on Friday, um, you know, that was major, okay, I mean, it wrapped up the past six months of uh, the focus on that North Node in Cancer, um, the focus on, you know, nurturing ourselves more, the focus on um, treating ourselves better, Getting a, a solid emotional foundation, okay? Um, new emotional grounding. Listen to your intuition, all those things. Um, oh, it's so beautiful. It sounds so nice. Um, and so there's, there's a culmination of that that we're in right now. Kind of seeing, you know, wow, I really listened to my emotions in a long way. And a lot of people actually have been very emotionally stable at this time. I was thinking and expecting it to be like emotionally cray-cray. But I think that we've been putting in a lot of the work the past six months to understand our emotions, validate, validate them, have compassion for them and things like that so that we now have a lot more emotional intelligence and we're able to handle things in a new way, a lot more emotional foundation, a lot more understanding of ourselves, okay? Especially if you watch my videos, you know, the majority of people who watch my videos are constantly working on themselves, that kind of thing. So you, you see the progress of the astrology because it's progressing, you, you know, if you put in the work. And so, um, and not also all the time people put in the work, sometimes things happen all kind of just because they're meant to, but regardless of that, um, it, it's, it's been interesting. It's been interesting recently, you know, with all the things we've been shedding and releasing, all the things we've been healing, um, all that we've been stepping into, you know, we, we're in this major period. I posted about it, um, like a dance video. Um, where I was in a doorway. Oh my God, the, the Cardinals. Oh, y'all. There has been just such beautiful symbolism and synchronicity in this eclipse season. Oh my God. This entire year, and if you've been following me this year, you know the Cardinal is one of the main animals I've been seeing, but it's been, it's been rare and it's been in very meaningful times. And so they're up there right now. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so happy to see them. It's a little couple. Um, so, so sweet. Love it. Hey, guys. Um, what's up? Oh, they're just shaking because they're wet. They're just shaking. <laughs> um, so regardless, though. Um, so we're in this major time. And what's happening is on that dance video, I was talking a lot about what happens when a lot is shed out of your life. You're kind of in this limbo phase. Um, and you're having to move into the darkness, the unknown, you know, because not only is this, this like, we had the Pluto-Saturn conjunction that's happening actually right now as I'm talking um, on Sunday. And this has not happened in the sign of Capricorn since um, 15, it's been 500 years, okay? And when that happened, that was when Martin Luther, not, not, not Martin Luther King, 
Martin Luther posted the, uh, I wish I knew, you know the history, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I should have looked up, got a little more into the, like, refresh my mind, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, Martin Luther posted the, basically he was reading the Catholic Church and showing all the corruption, and that, that brought a lot of the Protestant movement, that brought a lot of, um, oh, the dog is coming this way. Hey, hey, what's up? Oh, he looks so, he looks so confused in the, in the rain. Okay, he's not coming exactly this way. He's next door. Okay, he's a little independent. Okay, he's doing his thing. Um, oh, Animal City, just animals everywhere. I love it. Um, and so he posted and read read the you know Catholic Church. Um, oh, I think he actually is coming over here. Hey, hey, what's up? Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. <laughs> He said hey and ran. Okay, so maybe he's not... He could stay over there. Okay. That, was, that didn't feel too friendly. Okay. Regardless, um, and so notice all the changes that that occurred. Like, America, even being here, had something to do with that happening 500 years ago. Um, because of the, you know, the, the separation from um, restriction and, and suppression. And it's crazy that we're back in this kind of energy now, you know what I'm saying? Even though we're in America. Um... But, and that's why we're having the Saturn Pluto conjunction back in Capricorn to re kind of reinitiate this energy of like shedding the corrupt, shedding within ourselves the corrupt patterns, the corruptness in all, everywhere. Okay. And so we've had this major focus of that, this shedding, hey, he's back, hey, this major focus of that, this shedding, this focus on, you know, releasing all these structures. There's been so many patterns we've been releasing, so much about boundaries we've been learning and that we didn't have before. Um, you know, there, there's been so much new awareness of wounding, so much focus on past childhood trauma, so much focus on healing, so much focus on getting out of relationships that no longer serve, so much focus on getting out of careers that no longer serve, so much focus on getting on your, get, getting on your path, finding your passions, um, so much focus on nurturing yourself, loving yourself in a new way, all these things, finding compassion for yourself, um, giving yourself what you've always wanted from others, all these things we've been focusing on and changing and shifting because of this, this major time we're in right now. Um, and all these timelines are ending, you know what I'm saying? All these lessons that we're put in. That's what happens in astrology. When you have these major planets correlating, they, they're setting cycles and ending cycles. And so it's like your birthday. When the sun meets the exact place it was when you were born, that sets a cycle for the next journey, you know what I'm saying? And that's why you have a solar return chart. You can look and see at that moment. And literally, whatever's happening at that moment holds for that year. It's so it's so accurate. It's insane, okay? Um, and so we're at this place of this 500-year cycle of learning about corruption. It's mainly about, been learning about it, okay? Um, learning about corruption and beginning to take action to, to, to get to equality, okay? Um, and you see that in society clearly, you know, but, but are we at a foundational level of equality? No, you know, um, but this is why we have this next five years, five, I mean five, 500 year cycle that's beginning now. Okay. Um, and what's also beginning now is, so just like we're talking about the 1500s, they're going to be talking about the 2020s, you know what I'm saying? As a major time when we started something new and ended a major parody Um, so that's wrapping up. We have this six month eclipse season wrapping up and pushing us into the next six months. Um, so all these cycles are ending. And what that is, is as we're signing and closing all these doors, there's a moment where before all the doors, the next doors open, we're kind of sitting and, you know, reflecting, but also kind of in the unknown, you know, and what I'm realizing is because of it's been so many patterns, that's been, you know, the reason that so many internal patterns we've been shedding so much of our old selves we've been shedding. We're in this place where it's kind of unfamiliar because who we were is now gone. You know what I'm saying? So many parts of us, things that used to make us secure, certain patterns that we've relied on or, you know, certain mental patterns and beliefs we, we had set for so long, we now are, have released those and are like, okay, so what's next? You know what I'm saying? I, I now am, am, am having this new sympathy for myself. I now love myself more. I'm now on this new path. Where is this going to go? What do I want now? You know, it's this, this open kind of range that we're in, okay? Um, and so this week is going to be really highlighting that, okay? Because we're still in the, the, the wrap-up of the eclipse season. The Saturn-Pluto is just freshly happening, that conjunction. And so that's why I wrote down, what does your future look like? 
because this week we're really going to start to get the energy of planning for our futures and planning for what this next place looks like, okay? And it's really happening because, and I'm excited for this, energy starting to move into Aquarius this week, y'all, and next week is the first week of Aquarius season, okay? And what is Aquarius? Aquarius is, number one, yes, the water bearer's energy about bringing truth and giving it to the people, but it also is ruled by the star card in tarot, and it also focuses on your hopes and wishes. So it's about dreaming for the future. It's about your future focus. It's about what's coming next, because Aquarius is in the middle of winter. It's the fixed energy of winter. And so when you're in the middle of winter, and what's really cool is, I was born on the day of um, Imbolc, which is a pagan holiday, which represents, it's kind of like the crescent moon. It's like the first light of hope for the future, the hope for light's gonna come again, okay? Um, and that's Aquarius energy. It's, it's that, that's why Aquarians, even though we're in the kind of the darkness of, of winter, and you see Capricorn's energy, I'm not saying sign, all signs can be bubbly, that kind of thing. But Capricorn's energy is more realistic, more grounded. Saturn rules Capricorn. It's about realism. It can even be depression. So Capricorns have this very kind of dry humor, this very realistic mindset. Pisces is that Neptune energy. It's kind of foggy. Pisces are, and again, they can still be bright and that kind of thing, but it, it's, they're more mystical and foggy and, 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 and watery, okay? But Aquarius is randomly this wacky sign that's like super lit and, and, and you know, in the middle of winter, the dead middle of winter, but that's because Aquarius represents the hope of the future. You know what I'm saying? The innovation, the dreaming, the planning to innovate and get into something new, okay? It's that period of winter where you're planning for spring, okay? Um, Capricorn brings in and sets in winter. Aquarius is you're planning for spring, and Pisces is, okay, we're shifting. We're shifting out of winter. Let's get prepared for um, spring and trust spirit that spring will come, okay? And so that's, you know, you think of Pisces, you think of all the rituals that they did um, for, for the weather and for the crops and that kind of thing. Um, and so Aquarius is this middle ground where, where we're still in the, in the darkness. And that's where we really are. You know, a lot of us have shed so much. We're in this kind of unknown place. But we're now hoping for the future. We now have the connection to spirit because Aquarius is very intuitive. Um, the connection to, and that, that's all the signs. The last, the winter, it's really cool that the winter season holds the wisest signs. The uh, um, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces are the last three signs. You know what I'm saying? And if you want to go back even more, Sagittarius, um, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces are the matured elements. Sagittarius is the most matured fire. Capricorn is the most matured earth. Aquarius is the most matured air. And Pisces is the most matured water, okay? And so when we're going through winter, the time of that's the toughest, the darkest times, it makes sense that you would have the wisest signs, the signs that connect and all about higher mind. Sagittarius is about the higher truth, intuition, your, your vision, your dreams, okay? Capricorn is about your long-term plans, how you're going to get to the top of the mountain, you know? Aquarius is your future plans, the dreams, the insight you receive to get you into the future. And Pisces is the flow, the surrender, the connection, the spirit you need to get into the future. You know what I'm saying? And to get through life, okay? All those things are happening during winter season when it's the, the toughest season, you know? And since we're here right now with all these conjunctions and all these things happening in all these winter signs, everybody's in the winter of their life in some way. You know what I'm saying? And we're also in winter season, you know? Um, but we're really gonna start to see now even though we're in this winter place, what does the future look like? Where are we going into? That's going to start to come into now. I'm not saying you didn't have plans. Like I have, I've been planning for the future for quite some time, but we're really going to start to see the path, okay, coming into um, now. Okay, starting this week. All right, um, we got Mercury moving to Aquarius, which I'm so excited for. I have my Mercury natally in, in Aquarius. And Mercury, I'm sorry, not Mercury, Aquarius is, and Uranus is the higher octave, the higher mind of Mercury. So Mercury is like, it's not exalted in Aquarius, but it is, um, it's like really, it can work very well, okay? Um, I love having Mercury in Aquarius. It's very wacky and it can be like the way I learn is very unique, you know? I always seem to, you know in school when you like had to share how you studied or like sharing projects with people. Anytime I shared a project or talked about how I remembered something, they'd be like, 
you remember it like that? Like what? Okay, that's interesting. But people with Mercury and Aquarius, it has that uniqueness about the, your mind. You have a unique mind. Okay, so we're all going to have these unique, innovative minds starting on, what day is it? Thursday, which is so nice because this is going to be pushing us into this, what does your future look like focus, which I'm, which I keyed this, this week as, okay? Um, I love that the Cardinals have been, have been with me for the weekly the entire time, even in the rain. <laughs> um, they just keep shaking. Um, and so I'm excited for this week, you know, and I'm really excited for next week because we got Aquarius season, okay? Um, but regardless, um, so that's the majority of what I want to chat about. I am going to show you the chart so that you can get the visual. I always love showing the chart, especially for people that are, you know, getting into astrology, because um, the visual really helps you to see how the planets are progressing and things. Um, but that's kind of my spiel, guys. I wrote down Aquarius energy is beginning, which is pulling us to dream of the future. Um, the week shifts after Tuesday, okay? Because Monday, you know, we have this Saturn-Pluto conjunction happening right now. But the sun, which is our awareness of everything in life and our life force, is right behind the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And so on Monday, the sun's going to be on top of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, really reinvigorating and reinitiating the cycle, okay? Um, and so that still can be kind of intense and kind of because that energy is very heightened still, okay? And then on Monday as well, Venus moves into Pisces, so it's like a major shifting energies. And then Wednesday, we start to get this Aquarian energy. I'll show in the chart in a second, but we have Venus, freshly in Pisces, is going to connect to Uranus, the ruler of Aquarius, okay? Which is going to get us, that's going to start it, starting on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Mercury moves into Aquarius. Friday, Mercury in Aquarius is going to connect to Chiron. Saturday, Mercury in Aquarius is going to connect to Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius. So all, see all this Aquarius, Uranus energy? It comes and starts on a Wednesday. So that's very exciting. The dog is back. Hello. Um, go on, go home, go home. Where are you going? He's been going up and down the street in everybody's yards. He's just having a good time. Go home. Um, and I know he's, he has one because he's very, he knows to stay on the side. He's not getting in the road, you know. Um, but let him do him. He's having this good time. You know, he's having his, enjoying the energy. It's his eclipse season, you know what I'm saying? He could have been planning this whole six months how to escape. And this is his eclipse journey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You never know. Oh, no. I'm, this is my Mercury and Aquarius going all kind of different directions. So... This week shifts after Tuesday, and the last thing I wrote is this is the time where we're going to get a blueprint to excel into 2020. Because again, Aquarius is that, is the future orientation, okay? Um, I always talk about this. If you have, like, I have Saturn and Aquarius, and people with Saturn and Aquarius, and I happen to have Saturn and Mercury together, Saturn and Aquarius people are here to structure for the future, and they can also see the people, other people's structures in their future, like, all my life I've happened to be like, oh my god, I can totally see you doing that. And then, boom, they're there doing it, you know. Um, a roommate I had, um, we he came and auditioned for a, you know, cruise ship job, and he wanted to live in New York. And I was like, oh my god, you're totally going to get that cruise ship job. I so feel that. He got it. And then it happened to be right when he finished the cruise ship job, I needed a roommate. And then it was like, boom, now you have, you live in, you're living in New York at the place where you auditioned and, and were planning the future. He also is an Aquarius. And so, this Aquarius energy is looking to the future and really, why is the rain now getting on me? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, why is that happening now? Let me just put my little cloth over the key so I'm, my computer doesn't get wet. Okay. There we go. Um, so, this energy, you know, the Saturn Aquarius energy, Aquarian energy is very future oriented. Okay, this is my whole channel. This is what I'm always talking about. What I feel like the energy is going to be happening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're getting where the collective is. Everybody will be feeling this Aquarian energy um, starting this week. I'm very excited for it. Um, really soak it in because Mercury is only going to be in Aquarius like three or four weeks. It's very short. Okay. Um, he always zooms through Aquarius. And I'm like, that's what the place where you need to be the most. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so really tap in this next three weeks, especially especially as Aquarius season comes in, into your future plans for 2020. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the, and continuing, you know what I'm saying? I did like a, I wrote down some 2020 goals. I have some the next five year goals and the next ten year. What I want this decade to look like. Now it's malleable. I just kind of jotted some things down. I don't even know if I'm going to commit to all of them, but it's it's just giving my mind, it's opening my mind to newness. So that could be something that that this week could bring for you. Okay. 
So that is my general chat, guys. I am not going to be pulling cards. I'm going to have my cards with me. Um, but I will be showing you the charts, so stay tuned for that. Alrighty, lovely people. We are back, and let's get into the week, okay? Um, first, let me kind of refresh the energy. This is where we're at now. This is Sunday. And you can see Saturn and Pluto are freshly together, okay? Both at 22 degrees. Um, and if you look, within each degree, you have 60 minutes, okay? So earlier today, they were both at 47 minutes and 22 degrees, okay? Um, and notice the sun, seeing on Monday, it's going to be on top because the sun right now is 22 degrees and 6 minutes. So it's just clicking on, and the sun moves a degree a day, okay? So tomorrow at this time, at about 3.30, the sun will be at 23 degrees and 6 minutes, freshly over these two points, okay? Um, so let's check that out now. So we have tomorrow, early in the morning, um, about 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the sun will conjunct Pluto, which is conjunct Saturn still. Um, and this again, the sun brings awareness. The sun is, you know, what we're seeing, it literally looks like a little eye, okay? Um, it, it gives us life. Notice, the sun gives us life, you know what I'm saying? Um, it is clearly what we see when the sun is down, we see nothing, you know? Um, unless we have lights, but you know what I'm saying? And so Pluto is this, this, the dark depths. Pluto is, you know, death and rebirth. Pluto is our traumas, everything deep within us, okay? Um, our deep desires, you know what I'm saying? The hidden things about us. So the sun is illuminating this, okay? Um, and bringing all these things up, all right? Um, that already have been brought up because we had this lunar eclipse which brought it up. So things are already still, the energy is still heightened and, and, and illuminating at this time, okay? Um, and then it's going to conjunct Saturn freshly after because they're right beside each other. So Monday morning is very, very strong energy starting off. Waking up into Monday, very strong energy, okay? Um, and then you have Sun is going to be conjuncting Saturn, right? And again, Saturn is restriction. Saturn is limitation. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn here about getting to the top of the mountain, structures in your life, the long-term plan. And so again, you're really not only looking at the deep depths of yourself and your plan and who you are and your emotions, but also your long-term plan, where you want to go, and you can also be seeing the limitations in your life, okay? So major, major energy is coming in on Monday, which is why I'm saying it, the, the energy kind of switches halfway through the week. Um, but this is this is the energy that is still very intense. It's still very strong, um, very Capricornian, which is all about your reality and working and hard effort and putting in the, the, the focus and the plan, okay? Then, and what I was saying again on Monday... Um, towards the middle of the day, we have Venus going into Pisces, all right? Why did it not click? Thank you. Yes, yeah, took a little second there. Venus moving into Pisces. And what's lovely about Venus in Pisces, my Venus is in Pisces. Um, Venus is exalted in Pisces. She's her strongest in Pisces, okay? She loves being in Pisces. Uh, Pisces is about unconditional love and the collective and connecting with others and, you know, um, compassion and the arts and, and music and the spiritual and, and um, you know just embracing and escaping from the hardships of reality and just floating in, in, in with, the, with the above you know and so Venus is moving into Pisces which is going to be giving the collective a very compassionate energy and a very um, strong energy with tapping into spirit it's going to be very spiritual um Whereas Venus, the, the past, you know, three weeks, four weeks, has been moving through Aquarius, which has connected us. It's been a lot about friendship, a lot about networking and hopes and wishes. Um, but you're now really going to start to see this shift wants to get into after Monday, okay? Um, adding some more water into the environment. We don't have much water at all right now. There's nothing in Scorpio. Pisces, um, you have Neptune in Pisces, and he rules over this place. But he's been there for years and, excuse me, years and years, so... We're feeling that in the background. And Cancer, we have the North Node there, which is, again, something that's a background energy pulling us, okay? Um, so nothing really in the um, water. And what I'm also excited for is, notice there's nothing in the air, okay? I'm 70% air in my chart. I, I love when things are in air signs. And so we're going to have Mercury and the Sun moving in this area this week and into next week, which I'm so excited for, because then we'll have a little bit of a little bit of, every, of ugh, a little bit of everything. Okay, some water, some earth, some air. The planets are all now moving forward again, so it's like we're progressing. We have some balanced energy, feeling good. Okay, 
So all of this focalized energy in this one area, we'll start to see the energy dissipate after this week, okay? Um, so very excited for that, right? Then this is when we start to get the very Aquarian energy coming into play. We have Venus sextile, I mean sextile Uranus, okay? Venus is in Pisces, freshly just talking about that. Uranus is in Taurus. I made a whole video about Uranus moving direct, what Uranus in Taurus means. Check that video out for more tea about that. But Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, this place here. So with this connection of Venus to Uranus, this is getting us, anytime you have this connection here, it connects back to the Aquarius with that central ruler. So it's getting us that innovative focus. It's getting us that future focus in our relationships. There could be a lot of, and notice you have a yod happening forming with the moon, okay? Now the moon is a fast moving planet, so you're not really gonna see a very strong, you know, destiny with this yod. The yods are known as the finger of God, okay? It's like these two planets are supporting each other and pushing this one to attain some divine purpose, okay? I have three yods in my chart, so my whole life is I'm being pushed in all different directions and I just mean like, have no control, okay? So if you have lots of yods in your chart, you can you know, relate as well, but they, they bring faded events. And so with the moon in Libra, Venus the pl planet of relationships as well, okay? Venus rules over this area. And Taurus, mm, connection, connection as well. Uranus and Taurus, both of these signs are ruled by Venus, Taurus and Libra. And so for Venus to connect to both of these, this is dealing a lot with relationships, a lot with money, a lot with your pleasures, okay? So major focus on relationships and money, that kind of thing. Um, so you could really be, you could really be planning for the future of relationships, the future of, um, you know, who we are in connection with others, okay, on, on Wednesday. This rain is giving me life. I'm loving it. Hopefully you can still hear me, okay? Um, if not, just listen to the rain. You know what I'm saying? Just, oh, just take it in. And just lip read with the rain, you know? Um, it's just so nice. So I just feel like I'm getting cleansed right now, you know, sitting out here. The, the Cardinals are still there. Sending love to you guys. I love them being here. Um, it's just so nice. So refreshing. Just take a second and just... Cleanse, cleanse, yes, yes, cleanse it, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> so my, my Mars and Cancer, I love water, I love water. And Venus and Pisces, shoot, I love water, you know. Um, yes, I take like 30 minute showers, you know what I'm saying. So, this is where we're, and then, so it kind of dissipated a little bit, I can get back to my, to my chat. So we have this energy here, all right, new innovative focus on relationship money, um, but also a major focus, you know, it could be some, some, taking some directive and divine action around relationships Wednesday. Then we get to lovely Mercury moving into Aquarius. And number one, I'm also excited about this because I have a Virgo rising. So I'm ruled by Mercury as well as Uranus. So for Mercury, my ruler, to be moving to Aquarius, the energy I hold the most, it's blending both of my rulerships. And so I'm like going to be feeling right at home. Yes. So if you have, you know, lots of Mercury energy, and you also are an Aquarius, or you have Aquarius rising and you are like a Virgo or a Gemini, this is gonna be your time, okay? Lots of Mercury, lots of Aquarian energy. Yes, it's our time. So, um, moving forward, and Uranus is freshly forward. He was retrograde, but he is now freshly forward. Um, just excited about that. We, we're really going forward now. So we have Mercury moving into Aquarius. Very excited for that. Um, and that is Thursday. Then on Friday, you have Mercury, still in Aquarius, forming a, a connection to Chiron, our womb. So as we're thinking of the future, something's going to be happening in what we're communicating and thinking that's going to heal a part of us and make us feel more courageous to move forward. This is, th this is Friday. Okay. And the last thing that's happening on Saturday, Mercury is going to square Uranus. Okay. Which is interesting because Mercury is in Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus. And so they're connecting. And so this is, I think, going to be beneficial. But it could bring challenges where you're being basically forced to innovate and think of something new. Okay, you're brought into a sudden situation and you have to innovate and think of, okay, what, what's the best plan forward? Okay. So this is this energy here. All right. Um, and so this is what, this is the week, you know what I'm saying? Lots of Aquarian energy coming forward. This is very future focused. It's by the end of next week, you're going to realize how much more 
you've planned about your future, you've gotten an understanding of your future, um, you've, you've you know, connected with people that you may need in the future, a lot of them, those things, okay? Um, and then notice, once we get into Aquarius, okay? We have 30 days, because the sun moves one degree a day, 30 degrees, 30 days of Aquarius season. Okay, and I am excited for that. So that is the weekly, guys. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. Share it to peeps. Comment below. Let me know what's going on, how you're feeling in this energy. Okay, my Aquarians, where you at? Okay, let me know. I need to know my tribe, where we at? Okay. Um, yes, thank you so much. Again, I am still here. My website, I know I told y'all it was going to be the beginning of January. It's on the way, okay. Um, because I'm really trying to add where I can do my videos and to my website. But I have to do coding and stuff, so it's like taking me a second. I have to go back to my college days, get my coding right, okay? Um, so, I'll figure that out. Um, and it's, as soon as possible, the website will be up. But until then, if you want a personal session, you want a consultation with me, um, with astrology, tarot, whatever, um, I have off the live sessions via, you know, FaceTime, Skype, whatever you want to do. And I also have many, many services that are pre-recorded tarot services and astrology services okay so especially my aquarius if you got your birthday coming up i got solar return charts all right i'm gonna see what this year is going to bring for you i am so excited for my year coming up because this past year the thunder exactly uh, I have, it's been interesting okay so my energy is going to reset soon so i'm excited for that um so that's what i have guys oh if you want the reading you have to email me okay the water bearers period t at gmail.com all right um, and I will email you back and send you pictures of my services. Or if you already know what you want, you can hit me up. And that's the way to reach me until my website is back up. All right. Thank you again, everybody, for staying tuned and staying connected with me. All right. Uh, much love, as always. Chuck in the deuces. And I will talk to you later. Bye.